Welcome board guys for this sixth round at Virginia full course for this last round of the, our IMSA 2033 championship. Today we are gonna see this guy tackle down in Virginia. Hopefully the championship is already decided and Johnny Gutierrez is already the championship winner in the GT3 class. And the, in the LMP2 category, Tanner Selby is this championship winner. So hopefully today they might take it easy. Who knows? So somebody else can win. Maybe Virginia can be a good spot for somebody else. We are already in the qualifying. And we have five LMP2 today. And I see a new name, Nick Westy. I never saw him driving around here in SRO, so good to see new names coming into the championship. Hopefully they stay. We don't see a few guys that they're they racing Watkins Glen, unluckily, but maybe they will be they will join us in the next championship. Since this is the last race, as you see, the Eureka is flies. Tanner Selby is pushing. Is even though it's this is out lap. Yeah, and this is not Selby, by the way. It was Tony. Tony. Yeah, no, it's purple. Yeah, sorry, it was we are in the quality. No, he, he made a mistake, and actually, the oak tree turn will be the decider of this quality i would say because breaking late there is very difficult and if you're brave enough to break late there you make the lap time absolutely and this is a very tight track so the problem is gonna be i think while overtaking the cars what do you think about that uh, uh making a move here i think it would be slightly impossible uh, unless you have a good run on the oak tree this turn as you see they break he break very early this is not quite the way you should doing should do this but uh, if you have a good run there you can make a move on the inside here and even on the outside if you're brave enough but still it's a very difficult and technical track where it, if you make a mistake in this turn 12, you're going off and there is no chance you're gonna get it back. So, I mean, I think that this is not a track meant to be used by LMP2 cars or GT cars, to be honest. Um, it, it feels more, more like a um, little Formula cars track. Yeah, Formula like 4, Formula 4, 3. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, in real life, there is a lot uh, of F4 and uh, those uh, radical. They're yeah. very, very. We know that in uh, ERL, uh, in real life, um, the the IMSA actually race races here uh, in Virginia, which is kind of mad because they got three classes. Uh, no, sorry, four. Because remember that IMSA got. Uh, LMA, LMDH, LMP2, LMP3, LMP3, and <laughs> GT3, uh, which are divided in two classes, so five classes, because GT3, GT, no, sorry, GTD Pro and GTD AM. So it's it's a bit of madness racing in here, I think, for the drivers, especially the, the drivers from for the hypercars. But still, um, this is gonna be a, a good race, I think. Um, I really think that the difference uh, is going to be between the people who can, who are able with the LMP2 and the GT3s to not create chaos with the lapping. Also, it's very rumors. difficult to pass somebody normally. I would say making uh, lapping cars will be even more. There are only five guys, so it will be less dis disturb, uh, less. Uh, chaotic as usual but still we don't have that much of a spot 
even in the second sector nice love by uh, Nick Westy from here on yes the the track is wide as you see on the onboard but and you don't have that much space by the way. yeah he did a 25.8 fastest last sector and in the last sector it's just one turn and it's all about if you stick with the corner without breaking too much and not losing the momentum. Look at Westy! Look at Westy now! Purple! In the first sector. Let's see if he breaks later or not. He really feels in a run. Look at look at the inside. It feels it really feels like he's going to Ah so much understeer. A bit of he missed the apex maybe lost a couple of chances there. It was slightly wide, but maybe he didn't lose too much. But he ha he had so much understeer. Yeah, he lost a lot there because he had so much understeer. But still, he is two tenths down. So if he can manage to pull out a good last sector, as uh, before, if he, he do the last a sector he did before, he he will uh, be in pole. Yeah. Let's see if he can pull it that off. I think this is gonna be the next one. I should, you should have another lap after this one, I think. It's yes, at yeah. 11. Whoa, and he can! 91! No, 91! 91! Tenses. Uh, no, sorry. Millisecond. Yeah. 91. But he still got one more lap. Maybe. If he breaks better in the oak tree, he will be in pole, for sure. I don't know if he's pushing again. To yes, he's pushing, he's pushing, he's like pushing, he's pushing. 31 is a purple. Again, I another told you. Sector in sector one. Nice driving by the newcomer. Nick Westy. Look at the Eureka. Look, look, look at... How... Oh, he low. lock up. He lock up slightly. Maybe. I don't think he lost. I probably gained because... He made this corner very, very tight and very sharp. Let's see if the second sector gives reason to him or if he lost too much. Yes, no, he lost too much no, momentum. He lost, he lost, he lost too lost much momentum by, by that lockup. Yeah, seems like Tony has an amazing middle sector right now. Yeah. Tony did a 34.5 and as I said, it's all about big crash there between Selby and Phil Brown. Phil Brown, Phil Brown who Phil Brown had a shunt. The, only, the only guy with the Ligia today. Um we know the differences. <laughs> we know very well <laughs> the difference yeah. between Ligia and the Oreca. Um as I did before, even in this series uh, i prefer to drive the Ligia, but we know from directly from the developers that the oraka is faster because actually you can exploit better with the oraka and we know that the oraka has a better traction which i think is the reason but phil brown didn't even make a lap I no think. phil brown it's had the issue because uh, 16 second and uh, oh we have a gilles villeneuve joining us nice he didn't race the and last time right around now. we streamed, so it's good yeah, to see him back. Probably, probably missed the uh, missed the time, or he may have some problems on connecting on the server. Possible. Now it's all about. Uh, in one minute, the GT3 will take place in the pit lane, so they can go out as you see them. The Corvette, that's a new livery. By who is that one? Robin Taylor? Robin Taylor, I think, yeah. I never saw this one. I never saw this livery. Probably a custom one. I, I should think about Possible, but I'm not sure about this. Let me take a look. To 
2004 Team Racing from Holland They are all lined up The Callaway Robin Taylor I think The race He never won At uh, Canadian Tire Maybe today The Callaway can be Fast enough since the Callaway, personally, I think is the best in the braking at the moment. And here, braking late and braking properly, especially turn 1, turn 11, turn 13, is very important. Yeah, we know that the Callaway is probably the most uh, easy car to drive between the GT3. Uh, it's very balanced. Uh, as I was saying, we use this car a lot. Uh, At the same moment, it's the slowest. <laughs> As a top speed. Yeah. I, I would say it's the best car for the endurance race. But, if I remember well... Oh no, I don't remember if in... The, the previous build, the, the new build. In the new build, they uh, removed. They the engine again. Don't remember. Uh, I remember that they nerfed the engine, but removed a few kilos. They did a few things, but uh, they removed the fuel engine power to the McLaren. But the Calvi. Oh, I'm in Taylor. This can be even a race scenario if you go wide there. You're yeah, done. Absolutely. Lucky for him, he didn't touch him. I mean, there's a lot of space there, but lucky for him, he didn't touch anything because you know, we know that there is no escape during Wally in SRO. So if you get big damage, your Wally is over. And Kyle Graf, who switched car... He switched the car, I was the, gonna say. Four eight eight. Yeah, we From might... The... Why we don't see the 296? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. In Cartwright, he can... play a big jolly with that BM for, uh, BMW. Yeah, Cartwright was actually the only guy... who was able... to kind of be a menace to Johnny Gutierrez, but he, he never he never felt like uh, it, it never felt like he could actually beat Johnny, but at least he gave uh, Johnny some uh, how can I say Battle? Some, some headache about that uh, the thing is, maybe as personally today the BMW can use their engine more since we have long straights and it's all about putting the lap together and in the race since the Mercedes doesn't have the best top end speed and look just sorry to interrupt you but see that in front of Kyle Wright is Johnny Gutierrez and Kyle Wright it feels like no that's Vidigas that's Vidigas because today Vidigas is racing with the Mercedes. Oh, so Johnny changed the car too. And if, it seems like that the Aston doesn't work here. Because possible the two drivers that were on the Aston Martin decided to change. I will try to put only the GT3. So we see only the situation in the GT3 class. Here we are, and Kai Graf with a great lap. Hasha with a uh, podium in Canadian Tire. Today, maybe this can be a new challenge for the McLaren, since the McLaren was the best in maneuverability. And after the BOP, it's not the best, but uh, still, it can be good enough. Going wide there, I you, think the, your, your lap you can what, cancel. You know what's strange, Sam? I was thinking about? Yes. That 
cards right now. Pretty much, pants. we know that from some pros that actually the, the Bentley is incredibly blo broken as a car, as Pasha Patterson is pushing really hard. Look at that. Yeah, but this lap will not count. I think so. Because he went wide on the exit of turn 5. If you go wide and you slightly pass the curb there, it's a cut. That That is actually a pity because the lap seemed to be very good. Yep. Russia was. And actually, apart from the qualifying, they should be very, very careful there because it's very easy to go wide on the curb there. You think it's a curb you can go with two tires? No, you cannot. You have to go straight and not overpass the white line with four tires. At least, you know what, the GT3 drivers doesn't have to get mad about the braking zones because we know that GT3 cars have ABS, yes. but LMP2 cars do not, so they, they are not going to become completely mad about the braking zone. You still be able to recover if you break uh, a bit too far, uh, not that much obviously, uh, but LMP2 cars are going to go crazy because correct me if I'm wrong I never raced much in Virginia because it's not a truck that I particularly like I know that you raced here a lot with the Formula 4 I have a few things around yeah. 2000 laps but uh... yeah so correct me if I'm wrong this truck is especially especially for cars that doesn't have ABS has got very precise breaking point that you cannot miss yes i will make it very simple as uh, actually we can go on board with johnny going here slightly wide is very simple and taking a cut there will be important and not to take it in the race but there i would say there are three breaking that's a very important one is coming up here and you will see on the left side the marker they will be breaking on the two yes they are baked on the two here straightening the wheel and going more wide and then he cut it too much either here this is not the best line you should be pointing outside the line there and going as wide as possible and then come back even though it's still the purple sector and the first sector but that line is so fast that doing it is not easy in this one you are breaking straight then coming back to the right you have understeer and then you go to the left doing this in the lmp2 is horrible you don't have abs and it's a downhill then you have a uphill and breaking without abs <laughs> locking up is a matter of second these guys are i would say having fun because they have abs they can rely on that without having issue just slam the throttle brake and be happy turn one is very simple and the next braking zone where i would say without the abs is very very critical is this one you have to straighten the wheel and then brake and turn left they, as you saw they are just braking and turning they don't care but the lmp2 they are they, they cry when they do that turn wow this yeah. car is Sliding yeah, everywhere. Very sensible on the braking. Uh, and as you speak, Johnny is actually while well, paying Johnny <laughs> with uh, <laughs> by giving everyone else half a second of gap and looking for the onboard. The car, the Johnny's car, looked very very stable as always. I don't know if it's for the setup or for his driving style. I would say a bit of both but i think it's more very, wing very but um, still the lap was not the best i would say it could have been slightly better but it's decent enough to put him in the p1 in fact as you were speaking purple mutual sector again for johnny gutierrez seems that to, even today no one has has matched his pace and Let's good see. to see that Kyle Graf probably uh, he, he should have switched to the Ferrari earlier because yes. right now is very very quicker than before. 
We saw him making a few mistakes in Royal Atlanta and losing the car. And he's a purple again. Nice lap. The last sector was fantastic. I think he could have done at 43 too, but still is enough to make him do the pole position. Yeah, and I think that Kyle Graf too has improved in his last lap because he was four tenths down from Johnny Gutierrez and then when, with Johnny Gutierrez uh, make, making a better lap of three tenths, Kyle Graf just lost one tenth, so he was still half a second down, so good effort by him. So that's it for the quality guys. As we see, Tony Salvici taking the pole position with an outstanding 132.616. Very close to him, Nick West, 132.708. The newcomer, first time commenting him, and immediately trying to fight with Tony, which is one of the most experienced drivers on the SRO. Tanner Salvi then, a bit uh, more detached from the duo, um, which is, well, uh, unusual to see because we know that Tanner is one of the fastest guys with LMP2. And Michael Appel, uh, directly in fourth position, very, very, uh, a bit more slower than the other guys, two seconds and nine. Probably didn't find the right lap. And I don't see Fit Brown, which probably didn't, wasn't able to set a time. And we know that there's Jill Villeneuve that joined after the end of the quali for the LMP2s. So he wasn't able to put one lap together. Then we have Johnny Gutierrez, P1, as always, 143.668, amazing lap. And the only GT3 under the 44. Then Kai Graf, that switched from the Aston Martin to the Ferrari, probably the right choice for him. Very far, very quick, uh, he too, uh, with a 144.2. Then Tim Cartwright. We know that Tim has a good pace. Let's see if maybe he worked better for the race with a 144.4. Then we have Joe Brown. Uh, is that a Porsche? Yes, that is a Porsche. Yeah, the only you Porsche. You love the Porsche. Yeah, the, it, it's going to be interesting because interesting the Porsche has the best engine between the GT3 field at the moment. So let's see. It's a bit behind, one second behind the... Uh, yeah, two seconds slower than Johnny probably um, won't be able to do much but, to uh, keep the podium. He can defend himself at least. And you remember the first race we streamed, in, and the race was uh, with a GTE Porsche under rain, and Joe Brown was driving it, and he he didn't win, but he did podium with that car. Yeah, absolutely, Joe Brown. Then we have John Vidigast. He switched from the Aston Martin to the uh, Mercedes. So, Kyle Graf switched from the Aston Martin to the uh, Ferrari. Uh, while Robin Taylor, yeah, we saw him making some mistakes. And as Jill Villeneuve, going straight out of the... Oh, three, the yes, in the background. Pro yeah, probably he's using this time to get a bit warmed up. Yeah, maybe he didn't go that's, time that's why to it's practice. Both warm up session. Uh, Robin Taylor, P11. Uh, no, not with the. I don't remember. Place P11, files P6. Or 7. Hold on. Uh, we can anyway. try to get this. Yes. Yeah, that's P7. Robin Taylor, P7. We saw him making a great, great race. Uh, until that accident with Tanner um, into uh, Canadian tire, Canadian tire, sorry. But Especially the uh, correct is uh... is uh, uh, quite in, having some troubles here. Doesn't feel like he, we saw make him making some mistakes. Uh, sorry, Miss Barrett Erickson. I wasn't able to see them. P6 Barrett Erickson, as always. We know that Barrett very close to John Vidigas, by the way. We know that Barrett. He is one of the best guys on the race pace. Um, we know that he comes out at long time, so nice thing. And who am I missing? Sorry. Robin uh, Taylor. Pashton, yeah. The podium, the third place from Canadian Time Motorsport, actually seems to have some troubles too. 
with a 147.3. Then we have Stefan Wenham with a 148.7. Uh, a bit detached from uh, the complete pack, and then we have Ed Jones having troubles, not able to set a time. So that's basically our um, complete field as the as we are going coming to the end of the warm up. I would say the Corvette is one to look after, especially because, as you know, the Corvette in the race uh, has better pace than in quali. Suffer more about. Uh, more the engine limit but in the race is the best car on the tire and Robin Taylor proved that he can manage the car very well and uh, I would say as an LMP2 I would choose Nick I think I want to see Nick diving on the inside in turn one <laughs> would be great I don't Ooh, know. I, I don't as really you know. saw, a big lock. I would, up. Very easy oh, lock. Up. I mean, a lot of troubles here on the braking. Um, I would love to see a good fight on the LMP2. Uh, because we know that the past races we didn't have that much of a fight. Um, the LMP2 e here in R Factor 2 tend to be a bit spread, usually. Uh, maybe today uh, we are going to see a good race. I don't know. Uh, well, Nick West seems very good on the on the quali, but we know that between quali and race, there's like a complete ocean yes. of difference. Um, let let let's see. I, I think that we can see something interesting for the battle for the podium uh, in the GT3. Let's Would see, let's be see. great and because they have uh, making mistake. Thing. Especially making mistake is very easy. And uh, as you see, we go in the race. Now they will join the field. They have 30 seconds to do that. Okay. Fun. Fantastic, uh, let me put the names. Perfect. They will be doing a one formation lap and the, when they will come around, the leader will decide when to start clo uh, close to the finish line. Absolutely, that's uh, that is a great 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 advantage for the leader uh, which is right to be honest uh, as we see joe brown and and uh of climbing or, or not are they climbing the, the field back or? they should be allowed to come back on the field yeah they should be reaching the lmp2 probably they, they might do it in the straight I don't really know. Or it's maybe going not. to be incredibly. This could be really dangerous if they decide to start in the backfield of the. Oh, and Stephen Wenham uh, tasting the, the grass during the warm up lap. Uh, I was saying that, yeah, this can be really, actually, really dangerous to start with two LMP2s. In the back of the GT field because they they sure want to climb back really fast. Yeah, maybe uh, they, what, they didn't know and they don't want to get any penalty or whatever, so they just. Ah, uh, yeah, probably you're right. This is quite. Uh, well, wait. They should not take penalties because we don't have a rolling start normal. Which have, actually, it's race. If I'm not wrong, so they. They shouldn't take any penalties they climb back to the LMP2 field. Yes, and but maybe the driver doesn't know that's the issue, I believe. But it's fine. I think they don't want to take any risk and they will stay behind. So we are right in the last sector. 
Let's see. Tanner Savice sorry, is taking the inside. He's not switching since he's allowed to take any position he wants. If he wants the inside or the outside. Going into turn well, one, I would say the inside place. is the best. But Yeah, usually first place gets the inside line. Normally, into when you do But you can do story. great things around the outside, eh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. You know, uh, yeah, you're referring probably to your Okanam restart uh, at the ERC. <laughs> As we're speaking, we are getting closer. And uh, Did the I race got is started with Tony Talvice taking the inside. Locking up. And Locking up. And Nick Westy immediately trying to use that situation to his advantage, pushing on Tony Talvice. He's on the outside. Ooh. Closed the door. Incredibly, incredibly rude. <laughs> what a shutdown. That was incredible. Said, this is my line. Nick Westy said saying to Tony Talvice, this is my line. As we spoke, the GT3 field has started with Robin Taylor showing he's having troubles on his uh, Corvette again. Johnny Gutierrez uh, seems that the GT3 field has moved over pretty, pretty, pretty decently. Yes, um, I saw without, Robin Taylor going wide. Robin yeah, Taylor went wide. Robin Taylor having troubles with this Callaway. I think he got a lot of troubles. I know he just went wide by himself. He break late. He just break late. Okay, that's yeah, a mistake on himself. Virginia has a lot of grass around the track, so it wasn't uh, it wasn't that much damaged by the, the little excursion he did. As we say, Tonto is showing that he has the better central middle sector, but seems to be probably uh, having some troubles in the first and last sector. Th can it be that Tony is on a higher wing? Maybe the tire difference? Let's see, let me check the tire. They seems to... Uh, no, they're all on soft. They were kinda, they're all on soft. Uh, maybe yes, the wing can make a difference. The Le Mans package can make a difference. There are a lot of stuff. Wow. For the control. Nick Webb immediately showing his skills today with us. And as we speak, Joe Brown is uh, quite calmly uh, climbing back. He's behind Kyle Graf and Johnny Gutierrez now. And she'll be uh, behind Cartwright and Joe Brown. So they are climbing back. And Johnny Gutierrez already built uh, an amazing gap, two seconds in one lap on Kyle Graf. Two seconds, yes. Hey, he gains a lot in the middle sector, and I and you know he there's one corner that make you gain there, and it's the oak tree, and it's all about having the sensibility with the car and the feeling with the car on brake. If Nick can hold Talvice for one hour and a half, it will be fantastic. Johnny, I think, lost the position. Uh, okay, it's Johnny cut. Was, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's Joe Brown, I think. Yeah, they're losing the position for the LMP2s. Uh, GT, GT, GT drivers are not being, probably not very happy on having already <laughs> LMP2 yeah, covers. seeing the LMP2 over already is not the best. But I mean, Brown and Villeneuve seem to be very politely. Uh, they waited a lot before making a move, so very good. Uh, very good behavior in track. And um, these two are flying away. <laughs> P5. He made a great. Great start, and John with guest made a mistake probably because he dropped in last place. You can have a look. He's even behind Robin Taylor, so probably he made a mistake. Let's see what happens. 
Wahoo. Yeah. yeah. Big one. Ooh, we lost it on the exit. Ooh. Yes, got a correction there and he lost the car. Yeah, probably the car made what we call pendulum effect. It's when you counter it, but, but suddenly the cars gain grip again and just throws it into the other way. Uh, that, that's the worst thing that can happen when you are driving a GT3 car. Especially in that car turn where you're going almost 200 and a half, 210. So, correcting the car is not easy. Yeah, These two, I believe, the, they're gonna go like this far. The whole yeah, thing. By love, is increasing every time. Is increasing like one or two tenses from Tony, which is incredibly fast. Look, look at oh, how much. Well, probably Nick Westy made a mistake, but Tony is incredibly. Fast. Incredibly fast. Ooh. Ooh. Again, on traction. Lost half a second. I don't know, it, it really seems like Tony has an incredible middle sector there. And it seems like he has more wing because we saw that that middle sector is uh, fast. He's all of made up uh, of fast corners. So probably Johnny is on a higher wing setup that can permit him to... Possible, but now he lost half a second. 1.5, 1 1.6 yeah. is the gap. Probably, probably with that with that drift out of the corner, he warmed, he warmed the tires up. <laughs> As we see, he's he getting back now. Yeah. more gentle. He's already getting back those seconds, but... In the middle sector, he was... Half a second faster. Yeah, we know that in the we know from the quali that actually the first and last sector are Nick Westy thing because he made the best middle, the best first and last sector during the quali session, while Tony managed to build the ease gap all into the middle sector. Look at here, look at Tony, how much he gains here. Well, maybe, I have to tell you, not that maybe. much this time, not that much wow. this time, and Bart takes on deciding to move away, wisely deciding to move away, and sorry, but Bobby Erickson, he made a mistake too, look, look at the uh, let's last see. breeze, 24 seconds down from BDKS. 290 is the top speed of uh, Nick, I want to see what's is the top speed of uh, Tanner Stadet? No, Tony Talicia. He is running a, a, a long gears. You see, 300. There is a difference of almost 15 km between these two guys. So basically, Tony is on a higher clear ratio than uh, and Lo uh, Le Mans package because you will see here in the top speed in the straight, he will be getting this. It's going to be interesting. Same car, different aero package. It's going to be interesting to see which car. Oh, 290. As we got the DNF of the race, unluckily. Gilles Villeneuve DNF after just 9 minutes of race. What a pity. We saw him having troubles during the warm up. Uh, bad luck for him. Maybe uh, we hope to see him again in some of our next championships as Bart Erickson is pitting and Michael LaBelle. Ooh. Wow! So he you... was kind of wall riding there. <laughs> yeah, he lost the car on the braking. Oh! 
he tried to go full throttle. Okay, I was not happy with no. himself and yeah, made a mistake. Yeah, uh, really, really angry. And it just... I, I think that was kind of a tilt maneuver. The gap is still 1.6 and actually he's losing time because of the lap car, for sure. Yes, he lost uh, one second with the lap car, so at the moment yeah. Nick is even lucky with the lap car. And who's getting back in this Robin, battle? Robin Tanner Taylor's Selby. Really... Yeah, absolutely, Sam. But what I happened to that... LaBelle? LaBelle is on pit, probably made a mistake, probably is repairing. Yeah, one minute and third. 120 seconds of, no, sorry. Uh, 80 seconds of pit stop, I think that he made a big mistake. And Robin Taylor is really, really struggling with his uh, callaway. Yeah, he made a mistake. Already, already built, already, already closed the gap between him and Robin Taylor. As Tony Tovici overtook Nick Westy. So I Westy, think the lap car. Westy and had trouble with the lap car and Tanner Selby now looking for an occasion to overtake Nick Westy. And Selby now is back in this game. What a Absolutely. lap. We, I want to see what happened with the lap car. I think it got blocked by somebody. That was Barrett, wasn't it? No! Who? Yeah, no, probably trying to overtake him. Let's see. No. Oh. Well, uh, how many 360? <laughs> Stuntman. Yeah, well, I, I have to say. He didn't gonna collect the damage. Really, really, really good job by him to keep the car. To, 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 to retake the control of the car. And, uh, but the problem is that now. He gave a big shot to the, his tires, and considering that they are on soft tires, this could be a big trouble for him. Yes, He's not but the uh... <laughs> right. Wow! Oh, choice. Again, again, this will be very tricky for him to manage. But I would say, this is your first race. You can get. P3 with that easy easily since Phil Brown is lapping three seconds slower than you just take it easy if you find that the first stint is getting worse because of the tire there are other two stints so for yeah. him will be very very difficult in this first stint but but uh Tanner Selvi lost Pasha two seconds because of Pasha. Never mind, they're all together again. Look at They break the late. Wow, Wesley over <laughs> it's over breaking <laughs> actually it's over breaking on he has more aerodynamic than the guys I would say that's the way because he's breaking late the other guy since they are using the Le Mans package they have yeah. to be so has to be very was, very careful basically I was wrong I said that Tony was on a higher oh this is gonna be bad this is gonna be really tight this is going to be Oh my god, Nick Westy trying something crazy not to lose Jesus. time. Good maneuver there. I think that Joe Brown made a great move by breaking, probably braked to avoid the contact there. A stunner Salvi got back in and flashing his lights to Jim Cartwright desperately to, lo to not lose time. We know that Tonner is a fast guy, but he has to be careful with. Uh, Yes, reliability he also. Lost the race. He lost the, the race against me just because he was a bit uh, rushy 
on overtaking some lapped cars because he could easily have over overtook me. So let's see if he maybe learned the lesson. Especially in a track like this, you don't have to be in a rush, you know. You can wait because I think that if you keep calm and pretend to be as polite as possible, if you, if you can say polite, oh, that was they're very, very close to something bad. Um, oh, 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 what I was saying, oh, yes, oh, if you can manage to be calm. Uh, the occasion will, ar the possibilities will arrive to you, because now, example, now he will lose time. Lot. These two guys are pushing a lot, and Nick Westy, <laughs> Nick Westy, I probably Tony made a mistake there. Yeah, Tony I was blocked. On the exit. No, no, Tony got yeah. blocked there. That's the reason. Great, great job by Nick Westy. As I was saying, guys, as I was saying. The possibilities will come to you if you are patient and in, in trucks tight like this one you, you just have to be careful and sooner or later if these two guys keep pushing like this probably they're gonna be on some mistake i hope for them not, no, I, I hope for them not but i mean pushing like this in a truck this tight with this condition of traffic this could be really dangerous yeah especially because uh, turn 12, as you saw, <laughs> breaking on the outside of the GT3 is not easy. And going wide is just a matter of meter. But still, they are doing that. So hopefully... I think now that the LMP2 field has uh, a good... Uh, some fresh air in front and Joe Brown probably he made a mistake too because he is 42 seconds behind the top three guys as Michael Abel we see that we know that that's a bug from our 42 lay uh, over over lake because I, I don't I don't really think that he is eight minutes in the pits can we refresh to see yeah exactly and Johnny Gutierrez. Barrett Erickson DNF. Oh, probably another. He got some other damage there. What a pity. And. Eta. I think that. Eta curse strikes again because they said before the race that Erickson is <laughs> one of the best guys in the race pace. And. Actually. As long as we did commentary, I think that this is the first bar DNF I see. Yes. As far as I remember, yes. Yes. And again, Nick, Tony, <laughs> they're in one second. Absolutely. What a great battle these two are putting out. It, it really feels like whoever comes in front does not have the pace to open a gap, to be, you know, to be quiet. I think it's uh, lapping other car is making them lose time and rhythm. Well, actually, they are fresher in front, so it's just Now, that. yes. Yeah, probably, you know, this is a track where making a mistake is really easy. So if you're not able to keep like 100% clean all the time, uh, which if you are pushing like these two guys are, it's I think it's really, really hard to be 100% clean on this track, um, especially in a platform like our, our Factor 2, or our Factor 2, when where if you touch the curbs, is this a mod or is it official? It's a mod, yeah. This is a mod, but no, this is official track made by the uh, Studio 397 oh, back in the days. Yes, is is an old track, but it's a decent track. Uh, no, no, I was saying that 
we know that mods in Arc Factor 2 are strange on the curbs sometimes. Sometimes touching curbs, it's like you suddenly go to touching on wet tarmac. Uh, that's something I don't know. But, it, you know, it's really, really tight as a truck, so it's easy to touch the grass. On yes, the curbs for sure. Are high, so just maybe slightly touching the grass on the exit or taking the curb too much like this one can bring you to you know just a little bit of when the tires are this close just a little bit of uh, drifting out of the corners yes but uh, there are a few corners like turn four uh if let's see the next time they goes around there you cannot go wide, otherwise the curves collect you and you're only gonna go straight and you're not capable of steering. Yeah. Even it's here, the curves on the inside, it's very very demanding. Absolutely. And since we are looking, um, these cars looks are looking very very low. Look how much spark yes. We are seeing from these cars, so probably touching the curbs gives you bottoming, a lot of bottoming. And, and well, bottoming is not the best for the car and the speed. It's absolutely not, especially because you lost. You, you and this is bad for Tony, by the way. Who got stuck behind Stephen Wenham and lost. Look at, look at how much he lost. A second. Just because he got stuck behind on one corner. He lost almost 1.5. Absolutely. I mean, this is can happen to Westy too. Yes. And... Wow, Westy is really pushing there in that turn 6. Yeah, but look at how much Tony gained on him. <laughs> one second. I believe uh, being on this in the slipstream and doing those turn, especially the left tender that's almost flat, is very, very difficult. And I think that this is the problem now because West is going to be stuck behind. Uh, is it Ed Jones? Yes. And now is Tony stuck behind the Jones? Look how much he again he lost the auto again. Good job on lapping cars by Nick Westy. It was, clean, it was, was risky sharp. the inside there, but he made it. Yeah. We should say that... Uh, we should say that Ed Jones was good too, because probably he understood what Westy was going to do. And since yes. he's not racing for... He's racing a bit alone, he probably opened up the, the door a little bit to permit. Especially in the last turn, it's very, very difficult. To stay on the outside, so that's off to him because a slight mistake would have been a crash for both of them. Uh, and since he is like uh, in something we call the land of nobody in Italy, <laughs> uh, he probably decided to okay, I, I can permit myself to open the door. And Tony Sovice is on the rush. Look at that. And this time, this didn't pay off, he lost one second. He lost one second. And... Uh, with the oh, and we missed the DNF by Robin Taylor. Yes. By the way, we, 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 we saw that he was having some troubles with his callaway since the quality practice. That's bad news for him because he showed us great things in Canadian Tire Motorsport and now he's having troubles. And Tavici, five seconds behind, what happened? I think he got stuck again in the last turn. He's very unlucky. Yeah, I got stuck in the. Oh god. This is the worst place where. An and this is the second time. 
Whoa. Risky move there. That's Johnny. No, John really guessed. Yeah, good reaction by Vidi Guest. You saw that he opened up a bit of the history wheel to let the space to let the space go. Yeah, yeah, but I mean they are they are uh, actually they are on the same team. Yes. Different class, but the same team. So probably um, John had all the interest on letting Talvici go as fast as he can. He gained Look one second. Tony. Yeah, I think that some of the time difference is because of the breaking zone there. Yes. Because Tony is on the on the straight and uh, uh, now is Nick hard. is gaining. Yeah, he just said the best uh, the best lap of the race. So I would say he has been very very clean with the lapping maneuvers so that's something that's always pay off. He was also lucky because he never found a GT3 car in a bad place to overtake. To yeah, be but honest. something like look, what look, he did on it, Robin it, Taylor. It yes, but something that he did on uh, Ed John, sorry, beg your pardon. That's something very brave, but still, very clean, you don't lose time. Yeah, but from what I, what I learned, and probably you too, <laughs> on driving these cars and multi-class racing, especially if you are on LN, well, in any case, to be honest, um, it's very important where you uh, you get to overtake a car. I mean, in what section of the truck you get to be behind a lapped car, a, a GT car. And because sometimes with LMP2 you just have to stuck behind and lose a lot of time when maybe your direct opponent was lucky enough to get that, uh, that car of, or that group of cars on the straight and just be able to slam the throttle down and go past them without losing any time. This is kind of the situation that Tony Talvici is finding himself in and look at this as we were speaking this is very wow. risky by the way he lost only two seconds but still no he lost one second but that's fine for him yeah i mean luck uh, luck helps the, the braves so <laughs> but still again Westy finding himself locked behind a GT car. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that was a bit too much. Joe Brown is not going to be happy about that. I mean, when something like that happens, it's often 50-50. Um, As a, I won't say 50-50, but the GT driver only has a bit of part. Uh, to be guilty, uh, you know, when something like that happens, because you can always like yeah, break slightly early. You're not racing with him, so yeah, let him go. You know that this is the the car in front. Uh, he's on, he's on a direct fight. You know it's he's in a rush, so that he will try in any way so to overtake you. And we even missed that Joe Brown overtook Tim Cartwright, to be honest. Yes. I don't know if Tim Cartwright made a mistake or Joe Brown made a move. No, As I think... Looking at the gap, I think that Tim Cartwright made a mistake, probably. Possible, but uh, still, he's not... Don't be there. Wow. <laughs> he lost time there again. At the moment, the Nick is very, very lucky. He's the luckiest guy in the truck. Yeah, well, we have to say that being in front sometimes has its advantages. Especially because now we have only 13 GT3 on the truck.
And I know that Nick Westy raised a few other categories on SRO. And if you guys want to race in, on simracingonline.com.uk, just go on their website and find any championship you want to join and race. They are all free most of the time. They are free mods and free cars. So you can have a go. And this, if Nick win, would be the first win for him on SRO. He got the podium on a F3 and uh, on a Trans Am and it would be great to get his first podium with a prototype. One hour to go and the leaders are within five seconds and everything can happen. Absolutely and I think that we are very very close to first beat from the LMP2s, I think that we are going to start seeing P2s beating between now. One lap? <laughs> yeah. Should be one now, lap. <laughs> oh, no, maybe, maybe. I, I, don't, I don't know much. Three though. laps, three laps. Most likely they got three laps to go. That was very risky. Requesty. Again. Well, we, we have to, to give... Uh, I was say I can't say that in English because uh, we in Italian we we said diamo a Cesare quel che di Cesare, which means like give to Cesare what's of Cesare. Um, I would say that just give him the credit that he has been a very aggressive yeah, and that's exactly. has paid off for the first 30 minutes at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. He is very brave with the overtakes. Really, really brave with the overtakes. And brave and as I was saying before luck helps brave people so good good job by him I mean Joe Brown won't be happy about the, the overtake he did before but as long as he's, he didn't have any damage that's part of racing absolutely and that's a BMW without the rear wing Yes, I was right. Look at Tim Cartwright. That's a big problem there. No rear wing means that basically every time you turn the wheel in this game, your car is gonna just start spinning like a fidget spinner. Oh, did you lose? No. No, oh, probably on the end was too. Ooh. That's a big one. Francesco. That is a big, big one. Yes, and Pasha Peterson was lucky. Was very and lucky. Silently, and quietly, Pasha Peterson moving close to the podium again. P4 for him. Yes, I it's mean, P4 uh -huh. actually. And 20 second. 22 seconds behind uh, Joe Brown, so anything can happen. Absolutely, I'm kind of sad for Tim Cartwright because he's a f he, he, he gave the demonstration that he is a very, very fast guy. Ooh. They're lapping yes, Labelle. Michael Labelle uh, gets lapped by Nick Westy. Tim Cartwright is a very fast guy, but we saw that in many races he made a lot of mistakes. Just, just remember sometimes me, <laughs> a fast guy, but it's like having a lot of mistakes during races, so... I would say it's just a matter of being calm, stay very concentrated and get a lot of practice. Yeah, you know, maybe he's always... 100% on his pushing possibility, uh, which is something you don't want to, to be honest. Usually, when you race, you go down to 80 90% of your potential just to be sure that you have a good pace that is easier to maintain and that makes the, the room for mistakes around zero. Uh, 
probably is always on 100% of pushing. Uh, maybe after the mistake, because we know that he lost the position to Brown for a mistake. He was even angry. That's something that makes you worst on driving. So, bad, bad luck. Bad luck. And Tony did the fastest lap, the last lap around, <laughs> by 10 milliseconds. 133560 Then Rick Kyrgios Rickman, will be happy. By the way, with car control, by the way, he was able to keep the car straight on on the grass. Not not, not that easy, to be honest. Car straight penalty. I believe cutting. Yeah, probably when he got the spin. Wow, who was that? Tanner Selvi. Yes, Tanner Selvi. Is Tanner? He had a momentum. Wow. Ooh, great move. Great, great save there. That's a great save. Wow. We're really pushing to the limits. And Tony losing time again. This is, this is strange. It's like they lose and gain three seconds per sector. This is a strange, strange situation, by the way. Look here now, look at how much Tony is gaining and then going up again to 6 seconds. I, I think that the true distance between the two guys is around 5 seconds. Maybe less, maybe more, don't really know. And Tony Shelby is the first LMPT to beat. And yes. no, sorry, Westy, Westy, Westy beat. This is Tony, sorry. Tony and Westy both into the pits together. Let's see if Selby will pit two or he stays out. No, he stays out. Maybe he was good. In, maybe he was able to save some fuel. Possible they used more quality trim, but uh, personally, I would say one lap more, one less. Doesn't make a difference, they are gonna be three times anyway. Absolutely, and Tony is changing tires, so they are not double stinting. It's uh, very difficult to double stint this. Starting, I think that Tony still has like two seconds of stop. I think Westy di didn't change them. Westy is double stinting yeah, could them. Be. Could be. Westy is going. West is trying to double stint. That's my mark. <laughs> <laughs> this That's can be. Mark. Nick, you have, you have to ask permission before doing that. Uh, no, yeah, West definitely, definitely tried to double stint the soft tires. Now, can he do it? Uh, that's something I don't know. I don't have the data, but I know that he can. He just. Don't have to lose 30 seconds, 35 seconds in the next 30 next 35 minutes. So, what 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 tires Talvici put on right now? I believe soft again. Is on soft again? Yep. They are all on soft. So, so West is trying to double stink in the soft. This could be extremely good. And extremely dangerous at the same time because I don't really know the amount of degree that the tire. Ooh, look at Selby. Uh, Selby is pushing really, really hard. Um, I don't really know the amount of degradation that the tire has on this truck. Usually, when we double stint in ERC with the with the leash, um, we use mediums. When or we hard. Need to be fast, but usually we are on hard tires. Double stinting soft tires? Uh, the Orca can do it. The Orca can. 
Yeah, but still, they have a different compound. We, we didn't see many time people. And considering that this truck has only two brakings that are heavy, it's possible they, if you can manage the car properly. I don't know. This now maybe can be the worst choice or the best choice for him, but let's see. Yeah, the risk is that in like 20, in like quarter, uh, 15 minutes, let's say 50, 20 minutes, your tires are completely undrivable. Possible. And we are joined by yeah. Lorenzo, who is with us. He joined late, but he should be with us. No, maybe he has, he has a few. He has having connection troubles. Yes. But he is having connection troubles, probably speaking. But we can hear to him, so let's Wow, that on. was a dive bomb. Contavici is desperate to build back the gap that uh, Westy yes, was... Westy gained 30 seconds. 30 on the stop. Which is actually the, the time that you need to change tires. So let's see. Anyway, uh, so maybe we Westy can do the last stop with a new tire. And wow, Stefan went up. That's a winner moment, I would say. Phil Brown pitting, so 28 seconds to manage for Westy. He lost half a second in the last sector. Oh. He can manage to lose. I, I want to say that Selby still hasn't pitted. So, probably is looking to save as much do, do you think he's trying to save fuel just make a stop for refueling and then going to the end another penalty for no, cars right um well if it's yet to stop if the leader is yet to stop i think that may be the case but selby is in now look at that I mean, uh, hello guys by the way <laughs> hello Laura. Um, that's, that's good to see, but... Ooh. And that's... Saved. Saved. Um, I mean, let's help, I'm uh, Westy. Everything, every mistake is a plus for Westy. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Tavitia now has more than 23 seconds, uh, to, to catch up. I think I think Westy is doing a masterful, masterful job at this race. It, uh, sorry, guys, is it? It's the first time that we see Westy racing with the LMP2s here. Yes, it is the yeah. first time he is racing in the LMP2, but this is not the first time he is racing on SRO. He did a few races with the F3 and the, the Trans Am. So, oh, I that's good. Is, yeah, I think that this is the first time we comment on it. So. He's a decent driver, I would say he's Ooh. doing a fantastic race at the moment. And this is, could be the end of Tanner Selby. Tanner Selby's streak of victories, I think that may be the case for real. And Selby didn't, got didn't Selby get... Uh, a, I think he didn't win in Watkins Glen. No, I think that the winner in Watkins Glen was Gilles Villeneuve. Uh, no, uh, that yeah, made. Esposito. Yeah, that was. I didn't think that he has the same liver as Gilles Villeneuve, probably. Yeah, no, that, that may be the case. And, and he lost. And then in the in tire. Mosport, uh, I remember that in Mosport uh, was uh, it was another driver that won. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and a penalty. Uh, a penalty for Tanner yeah, Selby. I was, I was saying that. Tanner speeding Selby in the penalty lane. Probably speeding in, in the pit we, lane. We might need to refresh the overlays. I think Selby and Brown are not in the pit lane again. But it's critical for the race that Selby has got a drive through penalty or a stop and go of some sort. Uh, uh, if, for if he's probably. In the pit lane. Yeah, speeding in the pit lane. So that's going to be a drive through. Yeah, that's true. Not bad because drive through 
And again, uh, we, we have some so we yeah. have some weird stuff going on with the overlays. Is our factor two going crazy? Usual yeah. stuff. This is bad because uh, we were saying before, Laura, before you came, that Tanner is one of the fastest guy around. But yeah, and, uh, some, he's leading like, the he's leading the championship by a long margin. I think he might even be the championship. Look at Tony, 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 Tony. Tony avoiding the walls by a small distance and making sure that the tires he's got to make sure that the tires are not dirty anymore because that will be unforgiving in the sweeping corners that are here to come there we see tony approaching them right now look at that for speed why is he How struggling jumping and laura you are now able to see the first DNF of Power Derrickson in a long, long time. Yeah, I was we about to ask you guys about that. What happened to Barrett? Well, we Just saw that crash. he had uh, a mistake in the early f in the early stages of the race. Uh, and maybe the damage like, was too much. Yeah, maybe the damage was too much, or maybe he collect another damage and he just tilted and say, okay, you know what? No, I don't think Ericsson no, can uh, kill it's that just guy. Is too much damage. <laughs> yeah. Made of steel, but Nick Westy, Team WRT, and I, I, I am pretty. Uh, <laughs> I have a weird uh, relationship with Team WRT because in my company we did uh, a competition for the 24 hours of Le Mans which is called Fantasy Le Mans and whoever wins wins uh, a lap in Varano with the Dallara Stradale so we competed and I I bet that Team WRT would won, would win in um, LMP2 and they came second uh, in like 18 seconds behind P1 so yeah one of the best to be honest one of the best 24 hours I saw in a long time easily the best one I have seen because I we didn't get, we didn't really get to see the ones where Bentley won, and I think maybe the, the 2009, uh, 24 uh, hours, I, the one with the Peugeots uh, winning. I would say that uh, for what happened, the 2016 one. The oh yeah, painful, also yeah. The most painful Le Mans I ever saw, probably. Wasn't the no wait, like, wasn't that 2017? Uh, no, I was remember. Uh, well, we were talking about that with Sam some days ago. Um, no, I miscalculated. 2017 was last year Porsche. Um, oh, okay. The man, they won with just one car left to in the LMP1 class because <laughs> every other car broke. Um, Oh, and uh, I think sorry to interrupt you, Ricardo, but Pasha Patterson is in the pit lane once again. What happened to him? Maybe damage. No, maybe, no, maybe the pit stop. Maybe the pit stop. We are in the zone of the 45 mark, so most yeah. likely it's a pit stop. The GT3s are have a longer. Oh, so it's a scheduled yeah, pit stop. Should be scheduled. Yeah, yeah. Probably yes. Probably yes. The GT3 has a longer st uh, has a longer stint than the LMP2 cars. They have more fuel on the on the gas tank, so. And of course, you guys are watching the LMP2s going at VIR. Unfortunately, we have been notified. Uh, effectively, the world has been notified that um, LMP2 will not be a part of the World Endurance Championship anymore from 2024 onwards. So that's very sad news, if I'm honest, because I love these cars. Yeah, that's sad um, news. I think, I think that I think IMSA will stick to them for the next season, but I don't see them going a long way in IMSA as well. Um, I will say this: uh, probably it's the right choice. Um, we know that LMH, LMDH cars, uh, well, are basically P2 cars, especially the LMDH. They just have the, the hybrid system um, and on a different regulamentation. Uh, but to be honest, I know that if, for example, into IMSA, uh, LMP2 drivers complained a lot about the new uh, BOP because they said that their car were very slow and they had a lot of difficulties overtaking GT3s and LMP3 cars. 
So if you have to kill the category like that, it's kind of useless to keep them. It's better, uh, and probably LMP2 teams, uh, the bigger teams, we're going to ask for an LMH, which is, if you think about that, Yeah, that's, that's probably the logical choice. If you're a big uh, LMP2 team, like WRT, maybe, yeah, well, and uh, Yota, well, Yota has an LMH right now with Porsche. Um, yeah, but and next year, you know, teams like, like a, United Auto Sports, maybe teams that have um, a lot of experience with endurance racing, may ask uh, the constructors for um, a client program, a customer program with the hypercars. Although most of the LMP2 teams like that, that relay on, uh, you know, um, basically amateur drivers and paying drivers, they are probably going. Uh, or the GT3 class because the FIA will not allow any amateurs into the hypercar class. I'm pretty sure about that. There will be, uh, there will not be any, any hypercar amateur class ever because that would be dangerous. Yeah, and and I don't think the uh, the constructors themselves would let would let that happen. So it's a tough it's a tough spot to be honest. LMP2 will still exist in like the European Le Mans series and the Asian Le Mans series, um, and oh, probably Westy, that's sorry where. Perhaps you learn about Nick Westy was really, really risking it on the outside of Pasha Patterson. Yeah, that was a hairy moment. Uh, you don't want to use the prototypes as a rally car because <laughs> they can be not. unforgiving. We saw uh, quite a few rally moments in motorsport. Uh, Last times around in the Indy 500, as uh, as uh, an example, we saw Tony Kanan going with four tires uh, on the grass uh, on the back straightaway in Indianapolis, and that was probably the fastest lawnmower ever seen uh, in a in a racing uh, environment. And then we also saw many moments in the 24 Hours of Le Mans, which finished today Absolutely. at uh, 4 p.m. People were just Throwing the cars around, and also the hypercars. We I saw many many bad bad moments and close calls between the hypercars and the slower class. Of course, we saw the crash between uh, Kamui Kobayashi and uh, one of the Ferraris 488. Um, so, if you're a driver in uh, in the highest class, do not take into discount. Uh, any any weird and unfortunate circumstance that was a big risk by Nick Westy. Absolutely, uh, you know, mind of steel for taking two wheels effectively onto the grass at that speed to uh, dispatch Pasha Patterson and uh, try to keep the pace up because Tony Calvice has managed to uh, cut the gap down by about three seconds. Uh, the gap was 28 a few laps ago. It's not about 26.6, although it's it's oscillating a lot uh, as the sectors go by, but uh, Westy looks to be in control right now. Considering that before the pit stop they were 3 seconds behind uh, each other, so not changing tires has paid off and at the moment. I think that right and now also, the only possibility oh. for Tony is not to change the tire again. He, he has to make the same thing but reverse you know you, yeah you although stop and not change the tires yeah but he, if he does that then it will be pretty much even with nick westy although nick westy will have fresher rubber at the end of the race whereas talvice will need to nurse the tires to the end of the race so there may be a performance issue for tony uh, even so. though he can counter attack uh, nick westy I don't think so, because Nick West is demonstrating that his tires is still working pretty good. He lost 4 so, seconds now, Talvice. Yeah, yeah, I was stuck behind Kyle Graf, I think. And yeah, as you guys name him, let's give praise to Kyle Graf, we, who changed from no, the uh, no. Aston Martin. No, he made a mistake. What happened there? Let's see. So, Tony... Coming around in a very hectic manner on the outside of Kyle Graffin, completely overshooting the corner, yeah. losing the back end of the Orca stay. and bouncing off the curbs. He might even he might even have floor damage with that crash. Yeah, if I can say Ooh. 
Tony won't be happy with Kai Grafia because That's you're a chasing car, uh, you see a LMP2 car approaching, just leave him the inside. Yeah, but you cannot. Would, would yeah, but if, Rick, but you cannot go on the outside in that particular corner and just expect the car to disappear on the inside. I mean, it's a. I would say it's a racing incident, to be honest. No, 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 with was, damage no, 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 because he's in the pits. I didn't blame Kai Graf. No, no, I think that Kai Graf still has to add to pit, to be honest. And this gives the lead back to Gutierrez. Yeah, but Gutierrez was no match for anyone today. Um, no, I was saying that probably would. I, I would say this. Um, Tony, uh, so Kai Graf. Uh, Part, uh, starting from the the thing that if you are on the fastest car, it's your duty to overtake without any risk. That's quite obvious to everyone who races uh, on multiples. So if you are an MP2 driver, it's your duty to be as clean and respectful as possible in a GT3 car. But I would say this. Had been, I uh, had been in both side, sides, GT3 and LMP2. It's easier for anyone if you just be, um, if you just respect the speed of the cars that are much faster than you. So if you see that that's a tight corner, you know you have um, a, an LMP2 in, into a rush because Tavice is now in a rush. Um, it, it could be more smart to move to the outside and give the, since you are not racing for the win anymore, um, to give pace to the car in front because Tony there going on the outside could have spun the car and hit on Kyle Graf just because he didn't let the inside on a clearly faster car. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. As, as, yeah, but as an opposite, Kyle Graf is in second place currently, and before that crash happened, he was first. Now, you may say that Gutierrez is no match, and whatever, his speed is too much, yeah, and whatever you, you can say. But so. Kyle Graf was still in second place, and if Gutierrez was to make an unlikely mistake, because we know he's a pretty solid guy when it comes to racing, uh, if he was to make a mistake, then Kyle Graf would gain massively from that situation. So I think it's a racing incident because Kyle Graf is in, oh, no, in second place anyone. in his class I didn't and anyone. Talvice is in second place in his class. So they're both, you know, drivers at the top of their speed. Um, and I, I, I don't really think Kyle Graf could have done anything in that situation. He was already in the middle of the track. Uh, no, 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 funny. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm, I don't know, I'm I know, not but about that. just trying I, I to analyze the crash. Sometimes, sometimes can be useful to think some small details like this one. Uh, I, I learned on my own on skin that some that little details by being a P2 driver and GT driver. Uh, so, yeah, sometimes you know, um, I was think that probably Tony wa wasn't happy about that because you know you are in a rush, you are pushing, you see a GT car, you see that, you know that the GT car has saw you in 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 his mirrors. And sometimes LMP2 driver being superb and, and now expecting to the Labelle is letting his pass. Yeah, exactly. And expecting Yeah, but Labelle is P eleven overall and not his respect to the guy, but he no, is a guy who is currently not racing in Quest, so that that's more understandable. As Wenham even Wenham uh, from P twelve on the grid. Uh, gets the penalty. I suppose that for track limits because he didn't come into the pits any yep. any uh, recently. I saw a huge lock by Westy there. Ah, uh, yeah, because well, Westy was approaching was Gutierrez. No, I think that and... John with the gas. I don't know if Gutierrez is John. That's really? Gutierrez, and I think he might it might have yeah, uh, reached the contact. No, that's there, John. So... John. John Gutierrez. That's John with the gas. John with the gas. Sorry. And. Uh... Are you guys sure about that? Because he, yep. if uh, West yeah, over to Kyle Graf, yeah, they have the same car. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. This is they, then... Johnny. Johnny. Uh, yeah, John moved to the Aston from to from the Aston to the Mercedes. Today. Oh, okay. So everyone just dropped the Aston on this truck. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. West is 
really playing with the with the risk right now. It's, it's yeah, just, and it's, it's quite unnecessary because he's controlling the pace and keeping that gap between himself and uh, Tony in the John 27, 28 seconds, and John Vidigas drops out of the race on the Mercedes. We were just talking about him, so as always, uh, our curse works. Oh. Oh my god, what happened there? Yeah, too much curve. He jumped, he jumped yeah, from the curve, the curve. And then yeah, the car well, the car goes into the wall at enormous speed, head on impact. And then over it went. Sorry about that, John, but the curve was unforgiving to the Mercedes. Mercedes completely uh, in the air. That's your bad. And collecting airtime. I think that that's quite. Quite a bad crash, and uh, an unlucky mistake by John. He usually doesn't do, uh, you know, it doesn't overshoot the curves. Uh, it's one thing that uh, really um, gets him out of the uh, out of the other drivers because uh, he is a very uh, aggressive driver in a way. But you don't see that kind of crash happening a lot. Um, the curves here in Virginia are absolutely unforgiving. They might seem flat and uh, easy to take, but do not underestimate a curve, ever. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, since it um, seems to be a static moment of this race at, at this moment, um, I want to get back a bit on the LMP2 discussion we were having uh, about the teams. So we know that for sure WRT is gonna have the new BMW LMH uh, next year. We know that Jota confirmed that they were are going to move from Porsche to BMW. Um, we oh, know that what? Lamborghini is. Coming I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I heard it today that Jota is moving from Porsche to BMW too. Um, That's we know quite. That Rick, let's stop on that for a moment because we know for a fact that Porsche had some massive delays uh, uh, as in terms of chassis delivery. Uh, we know that Proton Dempsey was waiting for, is still waiting, in effect. Uh, there was for, a team in for, for the Daytona 24 who didn't get the Porsche. Yeah, there was three teams, Yota, JDC Miller and Proton Dempsey Racing. Yeah. Yeah, J JDC made the fun livery that where there was on the on their LMP2 like my other car is a Porsche. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, Porsche. I, that, so that problem. may be the reason. Although it's a pretty big decision if you think about it, because Porsche may not have had uh, the best of 24 hours of Le Mans. We saw one of the Porsche from the Penske team retire uh, with electrical issues, um, and the other finishing way down the order in the hypercar and class. The, the strange thing is that between all and the LMDH cars, uh, which we know just changed from the thermical, thermi uh, with, is it thermical? No. No, it's, it's uh, internal combustion. Internal combustion engine. They changed just for the, the internal combustion engine and the aerodynamics and the chassis. That's all. And the Porsche still seems to be the most um, unreliable one. He's having a lot of troubles in the IMSA. He had a lot of troubles in the 24-hour of Le Mans. Instead, the Cadillac seems to be driving like a, a, an incredible uh, a clock. It's incredible. This is this is very good. And yeah, I the Cadillac is a very sleek, low gravity center and long wheelbase concept. Uh, Porsche has a long wheelbase but not as long as the Cadillac and although it might seem like a very conventional race car because of its uh, rather uh, sleek shapes, the Porsche is actually one of the most uh, audacious projects because if you if you check it out the side pods of the car are basically separate from the front wheel arch. So it's a very, it's sort of a delta wing with wheel arch at the front. It's a very extreme concept that doesn't seem to pay off in the, you know, in the conventional racetrack. It was, however, 
uh, amazing in Long Beach and proved that by winning the race. Although you know, uh, the, one of the Cadillac crashed in lap one, and the and the the Acura had a very big shunt in turn one in the closing stages. So you might might speculate that that was a lucky win, but still. To this date, in LMDH class, so in IMSA, the only car that didn't win is the BMW. So to see Yota uh, changing from Porsche, which has a, ver has a, has a very uh, prolific history in victories in endurance racing, to BMW, who is effectively the underdog uh, between all these cars, uh, is quite amazing. I, I think that may be the, the reason behind this might just be the guys who make the chassis at the Lara, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I. I'm one. I'm not. I'm not sure about what I heard. That's what I heard. It seems strange that one team just gets the new, the brand new 963 <laughs> this year, and then the next year they say, "Oh no, you know what? We don't want it. We don't. We want to be end up." But to be honest, it seems quite obvious that. The LMH and LMDH program seems to be very, um, how can I say it, open to be a client program, not yeah. a factory program. And this could be a new era into the WEC. This is why I think that moving, taking out the LMP2 is the right choice. Sorry you to cut you off there, Ricardo, but Tony Talvice just made a pit stop. 45 seconds of total pit lane time and is now 92 seconds behind Westy, almost a full lap distance behind uh, Westy. I think he didn't double seam the tires after all. No, I don't think he did. Uh, but we're at 35, 45 seconds of pit stop, actually. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, he didn't double seam. Uh, yeah, I think that Westy just has to keep keep it calm until the end. Uh, making moves like before can be use useless. Yeah, Tanner Selvi knows this very well in Watkins Line. He was pushing like an animal. And uh, yeah, in Canadian he found himself, found himself in a pretty uh, bad situation um, in more than one occasion uh, with the uh, slower GT car classes uh, like uh, Taylor, effectively, who suddenly DNF today. And also Cartwright yeah, yeah. in uh, quite a few times, so... Yeah, yeah Taylor had a lot of never problems. Anyone. Yeah, today Taylor had a lot of problems, which is kind of sad to see a guy which was who was fighting for the, the for the win in Mosport, and now he was DNF, like in the early stages of the race, got the DNF. Uh, but we saw from the quality that he was not finding himself good with the car, he was constantly out of the truck, so probably he said, you know what, I can't drive today. Well, b bad days happen to everyone, so... And this truck, this truck is not the best truck if you have a bad day. <laughs> Absolutely not. A uh, lot of blind corners, uh, difficult braking points, uh, lapping cars here, I think that he is completely mad. Uh, we, we, I know that the IMSA actually races here in real life, and I, as we were speaking at the start of the of the stream with Sam, I don't really know how the pro drivers are able to not die every corner because they have five classes, five. Nick should be pitting in this lap, I would say, because... Well, you just need a splash right now, because probably you did full tank. No, he need to change, change tire. I don't really know. Johnny, yeah, Johnny's gaining. He gained like 5-6 seconds, probably. And last lap of Nick was a 1.35. Pony did a 39 and uh, most likely a mistake and Tanner Salve did a 36 No, maybe 30, 39 was because he moved from the pits Can it be? I don't know No um, But 
the moment, Tony is gaining because he was like 96 seconds when he came out of the pits and it's 90 now. So he's, he's gaining. Probably won't be enough uh, unless. And sorry, he's pitting. Probably a special dash. Is it, or is he already changing tires? Don't know. His third place seems to be quite sure. Phil Brown is going to overtake him into after this pit, but Phil Brown still has to pit one more time. Just fuel. It will be a fast pit stop, most likely. Just refueling? Yeah, probably yes. Refueling. Most likely, uh, even Nick will do the same. You think he can triple steam his soft tires? Well, he can actually try. I mean, he still has 20 minutes to go, so not a full stint, half of a stint. So, well, well, we, we saw <laughs> some LMP2 cars on the real man doing 183 laps on the same same set of hard tires so we, and, uh, we know that our factor 2 is not like that but one hundred seventy five laps on the hard is something crazy <laughs> absolutely That's considering amazing. that you're changing tires and you're changing uh, drivers, the feeling with the car is different, or something. Absolutely. I, I, don't, I don't know how much is worth uh, using the same tires for 183 laps. That's basically more than half of the race with the same tire compound. Um, sorry, I, I think it's a lot of seconds saved changing them. Yeah, well, it's yeah, but you have to keep in mind that your pace is going to be compromised. Yeah, it's always, uh, it's always, uh, you you gain something, you lose something, and it depends on how much you lose on the track and how much you gain on the pits. I mean, if you gain like three seconds, uh, sorry, if you gain like more, like one minute on the pits, but then you lose. One minute and thirty, because your pace is not good enough compared to the guys who change tires, so that your move is useless. Yeah, in real life, uh, it's very, uh, it's quite unusual. Especially, you know, the twenty-four hours of today was a, an exception, but in the the other races, uh, you would actually have a, a good option with with the. You know, without double sinting the tires, because uh, the FIA recently introduced a minimum uh, stationary time in the pit lane for every single class. Uh, not um, for Le Mans. So, not for Le Mans, because uh, otherwise it's uh, mayhem in the pit. Um, but for all the other races, the shorter ones, like the six hours of Spa, the eight hours of uh, Portimao, whatever it was. Uh, you would actually see cars uh, using new tires every pit stop because having a mandatory minimum stationary time uh, it just it makes worth in tires every time because it's a tire change pretty much that and that time you would lose with the tire change you already lose it because of this very rule so uh, I would doesn't even really have make sense to double see the tires at that stage. Absolutely, I would even say that it's made for the safety of the mechanics uh, that doesn't have yeah. to crash with heavy, heavy things around. You have to refuel, and maybe if you made a mistake, you risk to get you, you get yourself to flames. Not that right now. I mean, safety for the refueling these days are something really different from like 20 years ago, just 10 years ago. But still, I think that that is something just for the, especially for the safe of the pit crew. Uh, but still, 
for some categories, like the 24 hour of Spa with the GT3 cars, I know for sure that they have every, like every six hour or every four, don't remember, you can do one pit stop at your maximum possibility. So you have like six every... Yeah, that's true. That's also the case at the um, the 24 hours of the Nürburgring. I think yeah. it's every six hours. So you have a four, a total of four, basically joker pit stops, where you can just take it to the maximum and let your mechanics uh, rush and do it in a lesser time possible. And that is an element of surprise, pretty much, in the races because that plays tremendously into the end of the strategy because you can shove off some time uh, you, in you the pit probably, lane based on you, how prepared the mechanics are if i don't know if you were a team manager yeah well actually you are a team manager <laughs> where are you going yeah but it, it, it seems like seems work, so <laughs> where are you going to use your joker pit i mean you think about using it during a, maybe a full course yellow or a safety car to gain even more time? No. Or no. you would use the. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Or you would use it I during think, a race? Well, I think a Joker pit stop, I, I, I mean, it's difficult to judge without the data, but in a, in a race like the Nurburgring, oh, as Westy, Westy in the pit lane, uh, in a race like the Nurburgring. a lot of time, um, by the way. It was in a race just... like the Nurburgring, you would probably want to wait. Uh, in a, let's say you have a race at the Nurburgring in dry conditions, okay? So you're racing with the nice weather, nice temperatures. Track is uh, heavily rubbered, so you have a nice grip. Then all of a sudden, there's a rainstorm coming. The Joker pit stop would be. Uh, in that moment would be a killer for the strategy because uh for one reason only that you Sorry, are putting you the rain tires on before everyone else does and you're coming out on the track in as fast as possible so you um, you know amount you have more uh distance covered with uh, wet tires so you can start to build up the temperatures in those and you Lauren, do not have to go around slowly with stick tires Lauren, sorry to catch you off, but actually, Sam was right. Nick Westy triple stinking the soft tires. That's quite that's quite audacious. Because yeah, I saw that he just had 15 seconds of pit stop. So it was trying... a quite short pit stop. I'll tell you that. Yeah, just probably he's just gonna to find splash. himself behind the McLaren though here, so he lost a bit of time there. Yeah, but surely his strategy was really worth it. Uh, probably just a splash uh, in his tank. So, um, amazing job on the tires, to be honest. Let's hope for him that he, his car doesn't become undrivable all of, uh, all of a sudden. Um, probably he can easily manage, yeah, to 10 minutes unless Tony uh, has got a, an incredible 130 that we didn't know about that existence and is lapping like five seconds faster. I think that Nick West is just has to manage the gap between him and Tony. Just need to do four more lap. No, five. No, a bit more. No, no, a bit more. I would say six, seven laps. It's one, 130, so 12 minutes, 130. Uh, it's like seven, eight, six, seven, eight laps. Let's say seven, eight. 20 seconds. Let's see. Yeah, Tony is gaining because uh, the Westy had to deal with traffic. But Tony is going to have to do that as well. They, uh, there's a train of three cars. Uh, there, that's a Ferrari, a BMW, and one of the Ligier. <laughs> Ligier is going by now. Nick Westy then trying to push as much as he possibly can. Look at that. He's not wasting any time. 
and uh, the gap wow. is now back to 23.4 seconds and uh, kind of going around that area. In GT class, Gutierrez still the leader uh, of the race with about 34 seconds uh, of uh, gap between himself and Kyle Graf. Kyle Graf, I must say, I'm pretty impressed uh, with his pace in a tricky circuit like Virginia. Because uh, we have seen Kyle Graf performing re really well in uh, the first race in Daytona where he was uh, touched by the... Uh, the other Aston Martin, effectively, of uh, John Villegas. Then he had a bad race in uh, Long Beach, I think it was. Um, and also Watkins then. But then he came back up. And to see him perform this well in second place, so I'm, pretty, I'm pretty impressed with uh, what Kyle has been uh, able to do. And especially this race is very, very demanding. Physically, you're not resting, and even though these are straight lines, you're still turning. Twenty-two seconds to manage for Nick. He just needs to take a pace of one thirty-six without taking any risk and to finish this race at the moment but managing the soft tire for three stints that's something really really great not easy to do especially if it's your first race Bell is passing good parrots so he can be P6. Calligraph didn't got much time from Gutierrez, I would say 33 seconds. It's very decent comparing that with the Aston Martin, he was struggling more. And doing his first race with the Ferrari today, I would say it's really, really great. I think that Kyle Graf right now is thinking, why didn't I choose the Ferrari before? Or maybe he didn't have the Ferrari as a package. Because remember, guys, that these cars are not a mod, these cars are an official content of R Factor 2, so you have to pay for them. And maybe he just had the the, the Aston Martin and not the, the Ferrari, probably, don't know, don't want to speak days about that. The Ferrari is uh, really, really great after the last BOP. Unluckily, we didn't he was see. Fast Unluckily, we didn't see uh, the BMW because the BMW is is very fast also. But let's they see. They kind of destroyed the McLaren. McLaren was the fastest car. Yep. And they kind of killed them. Yes, the McLaren was very, very great, but then with the last BP, they really damaged the car. And it's strange not to see any Bentley, because we know from pro drivers that the Bentley is really probably the fastest GT3 in the pack. But the Bentley is very tricky on the tire. And uh, considering that you need to have a lot of skill 
to manage these stars is not a good choice. I would, would go for a safe better choice than going with the Bentley and making the pool. Come on, Sam, you can tell us. You would have picked the, the Radical. Yes. <laughs> That's my dream. To win a race with the Radical. But a nice race from Kyle Graf. So, oh, Pasha, no, maybe just a little mistake. I hope. Yeah, yeah. So, as as long as this is the last race from the Insa series of Sim Racing Online, for everyone who's watching. I want to remember that the action on SRO doesn't stop here because we have three brand new <coughs> championships on our Factor 2 coming straight out from two weeks from now, uh, which are the Porsche GT3 Cup, the 992 Porsche. This is an official content of our Factor 2, so the, at least the car will be under payment to, to drive that car. Then we have a completely free series, if you want to join, the Super GT500 2005 and 6 with the mythical mm, uh, Honda SX Nissan 3. Uh, it was the, Z, the Z33, the Z33 probably, yeah, the third lady, and the mythical Toyota Supra and then the, fir the, the third one is if I'm not wrong the yeah the LMP3 LM Trophy with the Ligier LMP3 which is another official content from R Factor 2 so if you are interested guys go on simracingonline.co.uk and check that races out because it's going to be three fun championships. I'm sure about that. We have two laps to go. Um, most no, likely. Maybe a, no, maybe a bit. Yeah, two and a half. Let's say two and a half. Wow, and Tovich has gained a lot, but actually, Nick West, he outsmarted, to be honest, he, he didn't know how to drive Tony Tovich, but actually he outsmarted him with the strategy today. What do you think, guys? He did fantastic, I would, I would say, managing this star was the best part of this race, and... Uh, Hopefully we can see him for the next championship. And particularly not making mistakes uh, with these stars in this condition, uh, it's not easy. As you saw in the first part of the race, where everybody was locking up slightly, making a few mistakes, those little mistakes yeah. can be very, very heavily. It, it looks like he is time. really managing, managing right now because look at how much he stays away from the curbs, not taking the curbs. Trying it smoothly, round round corners, not to be sure, not to overdrive the car. Great, great work, great work. I think that Tony gave up. He knows that 
there's no way he can close the gap, so he's probably gonna settle for P2. And, and to mention that Speed Brown is taking P3. Yes. So probably with the last stop, no, Phil, Phil Brown. Phil yes, Brown. Brown is free. He was mm, behind Thunderstone. Maybe Phil Brown didn't change tire since the leash yeah. is better on the tire. I don't remember if Salvi did a splash or changed the tire too. I think he, he splashed. And Salvi got even the penalty. Yeah, but Salvi was far ahead of Phil Brown. So may, oh, uh, or we or we missed um, another Salvi mistake. No, I uh, think uh, it's strategy. strategy. Yeah, but 43 seconds are a lot. I don't really know. As we are officially into the last race, uh, sorry, into the last, last lap. lap of the race, Nick West just has to bring it home, as Tony Slovich is not giving up, look at that, we gain another 5 seconds, but it was too late, Tony, sorry to tell you that, but it was too late. If we had uh, Nick before, maybe they would have had more challenge to win this championship. Absolutely. Which goes to Tanner, I think. Yep. And the so GT3 goes to Johnny. Before, but new winner of the series. Nick Westy claiming his first win here in the IR. Amazing drive, amazing strategy. Great job by uh, the newcomer of this series. Extremely, extremely good, good job. Greetings for him as Tom Kovice is getting closer to the end. Let's see if he can. Yeah. And as Johnny Gutierrez is approaching, yeah, Tony Tovice, Andres P2, Phil Brown P3, Tanner Savi P4, and Johnny Gutierrez is now going to win the championship. Uh, domination, total domination from Johnny Gutierrez, who won every single race of the championship. Amazing job by the American driver, uh, which was always on point. Here they are. He didn't let anyone, anything to anyone. Every single race won by Johnny Gutierrez, P1, Kyle Graf, P2. Here we, here we are, just the cup, last couple of corners. As Phil Brown can't do anything anymore at the moment. Kyle Graf, P2. I, I think that the switch worked for him from the Aston Martin to the Ferrari. Probably he should have thought about the changing car before, because he may show us a lot of good things on the Ferrari. Tangraf uh, crossing the line, P2, and Tim Cartwright behind him, crossing the line in P6 for the GT3. Joe Brown, another good, very good race from Joe Brown, uh, with Porsche, only Porsche in the pack, was incredibly smart to wait for Tim Cartwright's mistake and then get the match the, mo the most uh, he can out of that. P3, Pasha Patterson, P4. He, he seemed to have some problems at the start of the race, but then he was able to recover. And Tim Cartwright, uh, that's a mistake or the race is over? No, no, he's doing some, uh, some donuts probably. Yeah. So this is it, guys, for the last race. Uh, honors to you, Sam. You can, why don't you do that? Standard? Sure. So Nick Westy got his first win and within the first race, that's fantastic. With Tony Zadvice doing finishing P2, Phil Brown first Lige and the only Lige in the race getting the podium with a fantastic strategy. Tanner Salvi making some mistake. Uh, he would have gone for the P3, I think, without those mistakes and the penalty, but still decent race. Johnny Gutierrez smash and win the uh, in the gt3 class with a stunning uh, dominance then we have Kyle Graf, who i believe did the fantastic choice to uh, to go for the ferrari 
and hopefully he stay with the Ferrari in the in the next championship. Joe Brown back to the podium where he belongs, I believe. Pasha Patterson, nice race. He recovered a, a lot of position in in the race because he started P10. Then we have Labelle who is Elena P2. Ed Jones who did a fantastic race, staying out of troubles, didn't got any damage or as usual. Tim Cartwright, unlucky race. He could have been much much higher in the grid. Those mistakes are very very paying these races for him because otherwise his pace would have been for P3 or P2. Uh, the car, uh, the BMW is a fantastic car. Uh, you just need to be very, very precise. Stefan Wenham, usual race. A few mistakes here and there, but his pace is, get, is getting uh, better and better. John Vidigas, Robin Taylor, and all the other guys remaining, Shield Villeneuve and Berk Tyson got the DNF. Unlucky for them. But overall, this was a fantastic race and the p1 from nick was was something we were not expecting hopefully the guys who watched the vod uh, later on the simracing.co.uk youtube channel or in the stream liked it, the championship we had fantastic sixth round and the challenge between all these guys were, uh, were amazing and see you guys for the next championship most likely in september absolutely guys uh remember to check uh simracingonline.co.uk if you want to be part of this uh, as i said before three new three brand new r factor 2 series coming uh brand new ac a set of course race uh, series coming with the tt cups as i just checked so remember to check uh their website remember simracingonline.co.uk check us on our instagram a racing team check on if you want to join our discord same name a racing team what else fiber uh, i mean if you want uh if you want uh your own livery on every uh, on every sim racing platform on pc we can uh, delve that to you um just check us on fiber and what else um, did I forget something? Um, no, you didn't forget anything. And see you in the next championship. Bye-bye, guys.